Guys, I told you all I was gonna do this. We are going to do a full sharpening of H to Antique Straight Razor start to finish. Probably gonna be a lot of time lapse. Probably gonna be a long video. But let's not talk about it here. You guys know what to do. Turn down volume. Here comes a little bit of music. guys this came in from carlos over at dcs uh daily carry solutions uh we talked about it in the pod or in the uh, podcast on the live feed that this was coming i said i was going to do a video about sh uh, sharpening it so we are i imagine it's going to be a long video going to be a lot of time lapse you guys listen to music this time i'll make sure i don't use music that, that youtube is going to yank right out of the video like we did with the cardboard cut test so not a lot to talk about here guys don't forget though i am saying and i keep telling you guys if you guys purchase my merchandise i will send if you send me a picture of it of you wearing it i will put it in the background or in the video so at any rate guys that's neither here nor there let's turn this around and start sharpening this from above all right guys so i have everything set up we are going to start on this 600 grit side of this stone then switch to a thousand grit 2000 grit i have my 5000 grit still in the drawer but this new 8,000 grit actually will allow me to go basically from 2,000 grit to 8,000 grit and skip that 5,000 grit step because my 5,000 grit stone is not in the best of shape right now. Um, it's got something that's wrong with it. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first thing you have to do is you got to make sure your stones are good and wet. As you can see, this is extremely moist it's been soaking for more than 24 hours now this is not a sharpening tutorial but i am basically just going to film the entire video of me sharpening this knife and we will take a look at it and you guys can or knife i mean straight razor so you guys will be able to see um basically what sharpening straight razor looks like so i have everything set up uh and i'm going to get the razor out and get started i've wet some of these stones uh these some of these are splash and go stones but some of them require a little bit of pre-wetting um, and these are not splash and go. The the stones, this stone and the 1000 grit stone I have, you have to soak for about 24 hours before use. So, all right guys, hang on just a second and I will come back when I'm ready to start. All right guys, there's a good chance I'm probably gonna speed most of this up because it's not a tutorial. So as always, a little bit of baking soda in my water. I didn't put it in the soap bucket because putting, I mean, it's kind of a waste. You don't need that much. It doesn't affect if you just wet your stones with a little bit of water with some baking soda in it, it's going to change the pH enough. Your stones shouldn't turn orange. You shouldn't get rust. Well, too much rust uh, that starts to form on your stones and stuff. So these are carbon steel. Now this is a Griffin razor. This came in from Carlos over at DCS. You guys know we had him on the podcast the other day. We kind of talked about this. This is an antique razor. This is a Griffin Double X Zero Zero made by Griffin Cutlery Works in Germany. This is in very, very good shape. So this is an old razor. You can tell the box is all done really well. Handles are in good shape. Everything about this razor is in very good shape. It has obviously been sharpened before. Now with a straight razor, the spine sets your angle. So if you see someone putting electrical tape on a razor, they are not doing it the proper way. So we're just gonna jump into this and get started. There is a little bit of rust on this. Typically, I recommend not taking any of the oxidation off of a razor. So here we go. We're gonna get ready to jump into it. I will start and stop this so I know when to start time lapse, but uh, actually I won't, I'm just gonna film it and then I'll just get into it. So here we go. Now I do this a little differently. I hold the stone in my hand just like I would if I was at a barber shop. Yeah, this thing is not gonna be hard to sharpen at all. So let's just go ahead and get into it. This is a case, guys, where I want to build a little bit of a slurry. This stone does not form a slurry very, very quickly. And so I'm just going to build a little bit of a pre-slurry on this to help with this because I don't know the actual science behind it, but having a slurry actually makes the stones cut faster. Good and wet. Let's go ahead and start this. 
When I'm wiping this, I'm being very careful. These edges are so incredibly thin that just the slightest contact can actually cause damage. All I'm trying to do is just look to see, at least there's a little dark area there. That's still material that needs to be evened out and taken off. And I'm using zero pressure, just only the weight of the razor. If you put any pressure on this, you will bend your edge. So back to time-lapse or maybe just change in audio. Okay, as you can see, guys, I don't know how well you can see it. I can't really zoom in. My hands are all wet and the camera's at an odd angle, but we've removed that little dark spot, which I think may have just been a little corrosion all the way into the edge because it had a small low spot on the very edge. So basically at this point, we're done with the coarse side of this stone. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the next stone. So hang on just a second. All right, guys, we have switched to this thousand grit king stone. This will be the stone that I'm going to use to get the majority of anything. I don't like using the coarse 600 grit stone. This stone is what I'm gonna to use to get any of the remaining little profile issues, little nicks and chips that may be in the edge. This is the stone I'm gonna use because it's not as aggressive and it works really well. And you guys are noticing I'm rolling the razor. The reason for that is you put the razor down like that, there's no chance you're gonna nick your edge. You just lay it down flat. And if you if your razor is profiled correctly, I don't know how well you guys can be able to see this, you should see a little wave form in front of the razor. It's easier to see on the higher grits, but all right, let's go ahead and get into this. Back to time-lapse for you guys. Can you guys see that wave of water it's pushing in front of it? Up the stone. That's one of the ways you know that you have got a good flat edge. 
And these king stones, these are great little stones. They cut really well. They're not expensive. They cut nice and fast and aggressive. And they're not too aggressive because with a straight razor, the coarser grits can actually damage the edge while you're using them. Uh, this did have a little bit of an issue. I knew I had to start on that 600 grit. If this was a razor I had already sharpened before, I would have started with the 1000 grit. There was no, there would be no need to make sure I profiled it completely unless there was chips or severe corrosion on the edge. Okay, back time lapse with you guys. It's gonna be a little bit. So guys, with a straight razor, there's not a lot of feeling the edge, feeling for bursts. It's all a visual inspection because the edge is so fragile that just, just messing around with it, you can actually bend the edge and damage it. And then you have to basically start fresh. So what I'm looking for is just any little, little spots of weirdness. There's a little black line on here. And I think that's just an undissolved carbide. It's probably too fine for you guys to see. I am wearing my reading glasses. At first I thought it was a crack, but if I look, it doesn't go through the side. So that, I think that just might be a little line of undissolved carbides. We're gonna give it a few more passes on the thousand grit and see if it kind of goes away. If it doesn't, that tells me it's an artifact in the steel and not anything that I really have to worry about. I don't know if you guys can see it. It is just a little black line right there about my thumbnail in that edge. And it's, I don't think it's anything except just an artifact in a steel, possibly some undissolved carbides. So let's go back to back and forth. I believe that that is just a little artifact in the steel. I'm not seeing any issues with it. I don't see any flex in it when I push on the blade. So that tells me it's just a little dark line in the steel. It happens um, in carbon steels sometimes. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna end this part and we're gonna switch to the next stone, which is my 2000 grit stone. Guys, I meant to mention it. All these stones were pre-flattened before I started. So that's why you're not seeing me do a lot of flattening. I am gonna build a pre-slurry on this. but I won't be leaving this. If I do this on any of the other stones, I won't be leaving this on there because this is technically 2000 grit, the same as this stone. 
So if I put it on any of these other stones and leave it as a slurry I'd be cutting with, it's going to be more aggressive than the stone and it's not going to get us anywhere. 2000 grit for straight razors is where I would stop doing this. On a knife, I may do that because there's still the chance, you know, as it builds its own slurry and the slurry dissipates because knives are not as delicate. So let's go ahead and get into this. So like I said, 2000 grit on this. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll bring you guys back to high speed here in just a second. Sorry about that guys, I'm wearing a hat. So if you notice, I have flipped my stones occasionally. It's because I want even wear on my stones. I don't wanna have an, a stone that's at a weird angle or anything like that. So that's why you see me flipping the stones every once in a while. And as you can see, the slurry that I had built is really darkening up. That's not rust, that's not oxidation. That is material I'm removing from this edge. And I will tell you, anywhere between five to 10 minutes, is probably good. I like to stick to about the 10 minutes per stone uh, to get you a good feel for how well you're removing that material. So, all right, back to time lapse. Guys, as I'm sharpening this, I can show you here, you can tell that this razor has been used and it's been put away wet with a little bit of moisture left on the blade. There's a little tiny bit of the beginnings of some corrosion where the handle touches. And so that just tells me it's either drawn damp in the packaging or it has been used and put away a little bit damp. But I'm, this, is, this razor is in incredible shape. Um, I never recommend removing any rust or anything from an antique straight razor, but I think we're about done on that stone. Um, you can see that the slurry has darkened up a good bit. I am not going to wipe that stone off because I'm going to go to the next stone, which is 5,000 grit. And I don't want to necessarily uh, remove all that because if I look at this and it looks as though I do need to go back to the 2,000 grit, I don't want to have to build a slurry again. So even if it dries up, I can just put some water on it. And if you notice, when I put this down, I'm being very cautious to make sure that the blade gets set down flat. Um, but I don't necessarily want to close it because there's still water and stuff inside the handle. So let me go ahead and get this stone. This stone needs a little bit of moisture added to it. It's, uh, it is a splash and go, but it needs a little bit of a pre-wet before we start. So I'll bring you guys back when that stone has gotten saturated to a point where I can start using it. Mm -hmm. 
So there's nothing else for me to prep on this stone. I'm not gonna use the Nagura stone because this stone just got flattened recently and it is not loaded to a point where I would be concerned. So these stones cut really fast. So these might kind of maybe the exception to the 10 minute rule once you start getting up here. And you're gonna see me do something once I hit 5,000 grit, I start doing a few passing or uh, stropping strokes uh, when I start or when I finish, I mean. So you're not gonna see much of a slurry buildup on this one. So, okay, let's go ahead and go to time-lapse. So at this point, guys, that stone, I'm done with that 5,000 grit. It does not look like I need to go back down to 2,000 grit, so I am gonna rinse this off. The reason for that is you don't wanna leave, even though I put baking soda in the water, you don't wanna leave that slurry on your stones if you don't need it, because it will start to oxidize, and then you'll have to clean your stones because you'll have an orange layer of rust and uh, uh, iron oxide. Iron oxide actually will affect the way the stone cuts because iron oxide is pretty hard, just like aluminum oxide, things like that. It winds up being an abrasive you don't want on there that might be of a higher grit than your actual stone. So try to, if you do get orange on it, just clean them up. You can use this to get that layer of, of iron oxide off, or you can just flatten your stone. I use this stone pretty, pretty evenly, so I don't think I will need to do any flattening. I'm just gonna get it back in a bucket of water to clean off that slurry. And then I'll bring you guys back when we hit the 8,000 grit stone. I guess the next stone is a Shapton 8,000 grit ceramic whetstone. These cut really well. I'm gonna do this one, 10,000 grit on the uh, Naniwa, and then 12,000 grit on the other Shapton that I have. These are great. I don't necessarily need to go above 12,000 grit because I am gonna strop this on two different strops. I'm gonna strop it on my, hat, on my one micron and on the actual leather razor strop, and I'll have to move the camera for that so you can, guys can see that. So as you saw, I did finish on some strops, uh, stropping strokes. I will tell you all, even though this is not a tutorial series uh, video, if you are sharpening a straight razor, <clears throat> when you start getting into the higher grist, it's kind of good to do that tr edge trailing stroke a couple times because that super, super fine edge as you're cutting into, it's hitting into the abrasives that have built up in front of it, especially if you're using water stones that are building a slurry. If you're doing that edge trailing, you're pushing the pushing all that stuff out of the way and you're dragging it backwards and you're not hitting into. So the like the majority of it is done as an edge leading stroke, but the final few passes on the next three stones are always going to be edge trailing, almost like stropping just to make sure that there's none of that. So that final little bit of that edge is not being knocked into by the abrasives. So let's go ahead and uh, as always. Now these stones do cut really well. They don't build a slurry. You do have to make sure they don't get loaded. You'll see this start to get a little bit of a black residue on the stone. So, all right guys, back to time-lapse.
So guys, I had to rinse that stone off. I had a bunch of lint and things on it. I don't know if it got wiped off with a rag or something, but you can feel the razor want to kind of bounce over those little pieces of lint. So that's the whole point of taking it off camera. I was rinsing the stone off. Back to time-lapse. Right, guys at this point this knife there i'm sorry this razor is 100 percent ready to shave however i have found that the higher you go up in grit the more comfortable to shave a lot of guys stop at the 8,000 grit i like to go all the way to 12,000 grit and then i do the half or the micron the one micron strop and then i actually strop it on a leather strop so we'll be doing all those steps and the reason i do that is right off the stone that first shave might be a little coarse even on a 12,000 grit stone. And then once you strop it once on your on your leather strop, it kind of softens that edge up, not to where it doesn't cut, but it's not as aggressive. It does not feel the same. And some people like that. So typically what I do is I'll do the full sharpening and then I run it on a strop to, uh, on a leather strop just to, just to soften that edge up to where it's a smooth, comfortable, tug-free shave. So it, it doesn't affect the edge. It just affects the way it feels on your skin. So at this point, I'm gonna move some of this stuff out of the way. I put some of these stones away and we're gonna switch to 10,000 grit. Little tip guys, if you have these ceramic uh, Shapton stones, give them a quick wipe off before you put them away. Don't put them away with a lot of the black residue. And if you have a lot, use your Nagura stone to clean it up and then rinse it. So I'm gonna wipe this off before I put it away. You can see there's uh, some black material from from the steel. You don't want to leave that in. It soaks into the pores of the stone and then it's a pain to get it out. And like I said, we're doing carbon steel, so it could cause oxidation. You don't want that on these expensive stones. So be right back. All right, we are ready to start on the 10,000 grit. I did take it off camera and clean it up with the Nagura stone and rinsed it off real good because it had some black residue on it and I just wanted to make sure the stone was perfectly clean. So yeah. This won't take very long. This stone also cuts really fast. These ceramic uh, Naniwa and Chosera stones, they cut really, really fast. So let's go ahead, go back to time-lapse. guys so we're basically done on that 10,000 grit you're going to notice there's a spot down here where it's not quite as mirror polished it never will be the majority of people I mean no one to tell you the truth uses the heel so you're going to have some inconsistencies where this comes up this part here to here 
that's the blade that you're going to be using. That Where it curves down, never an issue because no one is going to use that for shaving. It's always the, to tell you the truth, it's the front half of the blade that most people use. For your cheeks, you might use almost the whole blade, but typically what you're shaving with is about three quarters up, um, th three quarters from the tip back. Uh, so about a quarter of that blade really doesn't get used. Um, most people don't use it because you have more control at the tip, the way you hold the straight razor properly, you have more control at the tip and it's more of a rocking motion. You're not really using this area back here. So if you happen to notice that you have a straight razor that didn't quite get mirror polished, like that last pinky width, it's not really an issue because you're really not going to be using it. So let's go ahead and get the stone out of the way and break out the 12,000 grit. All right, guys, this is the last stone. This is a 12,000 grit stone. This one is reserved only for razors. I do have two of these now, thanks to Aiden. Uh, one of paying members, he sent me a 12,000 grit stone that he just doesn't use and sent it to me. So this is another Shapton. So the Shapton Cream 12,000 grit. The nice thing about some of these stones is they're nice and wide and having a wide stone means that you don't have to do as much of the X to make sure you're getting the whole edge. So it's easier for a lot of folks to do that. So this stone is extremely fine. It still does cut relatively well. This should not take very long at all. This 12,000 grit stone historically cuts super, super fast compared to some other 12,000 and 10,000 grit stones I've used. So, all right, guys, let's go ahead and get into it. Got some water with baking soda on it. Let's get started. All right, off the time lapse with you guys. There's a hair on the stone. I don't know how well you guys can see it. That quickly, this stone has started to build up and darken up. This stone cuts really, really fast. And at 12,000 grit, you don't need a lot of material to be removed. So with a stone that cuts that fast, sometimes just a few passes like it. Yeah, that is gorgeous. Nice, consistent, and even. So we're gonna do some stropping passes, edge trailing passes, I should say. And then we should be done except for the stropping. There we go, guys. I think that's pretty much done. Let's go ahead and get it stropped up and do a quick beard hair test um, just to make sure it just pops a hair and then we'll strop it up completely and be done. So hang on just a second, let me get set up for so that. Guys, when we're talking about, before I even do it, before we get into it, when I talk about daily stropping, okay, there's a couple things you need to know about stropping and I'll mention it when we do it, but get a good quality strop. This was made by, I can't even remember the name of the company. This was their uh, Rooster Cogburn model of bridal strop. Nice and broad, made out of kangaroo leather. And instead of having canvas, it is felt. So the nice thing about Chicago screws, if I have to replace the piece of felt, I can always get a new one. Not just attractive, very, very, very good strop. So uh, I will be using this as the final strop, but before we do that, I've got to do the balsa wood strop. And then I've got to get this set up and I'll show you how to use this strop. And I'll talk about things you should and shouldn't do when stropping. So, okay guys. That's not necessarily tutorial, that's just good use because this edge should last about four to six months. If you're properly stropping every day and you're doing it the right way, it should last about four to six months, even with daily shaves. So, okay guys, hang on a second. Let me get this all set up. All right guys, I just loaded this drop before I did that uh, Rockstead. And so I was using this to polish the, the primary bevels and things to get rid of some micro scratches, but it has not left enough metal material behind that I need to completely clean it off and, and reload it. It's still really well loaded. So stropping is just simple as that. You just draw this backwards, 
edge trailing, no pressure. And what it's gonna do is it's just gonna smooth out any possibility of any little burr that was left. And you can hear that kind of sing on that, even though that's just balsa wood. Uh, these hollow ground blades are so, so fine. So no pressure at all, guys, none. Just let the weight of the razor do all the work while you're doing the stropping. I can't emphasize that enough. That's one of the stropping is where most people fail when it comes to straight razors. And that's what makes their edge have to be redone all the time. And if you're sharpening your straight razor more than once every, I would say if you're sharpening your straight razor more than once every three months, then your stropping technique needs to be enhanced. I have some straight razors that I sharpened and then did not even come close to needing to resharpen for over a year back when I did shave with straight razor. Um, I did shave with a straight razor for a long time. So, and there we go. That should be just about it. Now you guys can see, if I remove all the rest of the dust, that is a pretty mere polished edge on that. The finer the edge, the smoother the, the shave. This would still be kind of an aggressive shave, even though I put it on this, because technically this is just like a 30,000 grit sharpening stone. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to set that razor strop up and I'm going to get this stropped up and I'm going to give you guys some tips on how to strop properly. Okay, guys, So this is a strop. Now, this is not a strop that I use on razors. This is a razor strop, but this is only used on knives um, because I, I do make I do my edges as a convex. So that means that a strop like this works pretty good. A razor strop is going to be something that you want that is going to be high quality leather. Like I said, this is done in, in kangaroo leather. And you can see there's some, some nicks in it from, from hiccups with it, but this is a piece of leather and a piece of felt. Now, the way you strop, the biggest problem is a lot of people do not realize the proper way to strop. So the nice thing about this, I can just hook this on here. So the proper way to strop is to, let me move this back a little bit so you can see better. You wanna get that strop fairly tight. You don't wanna have a lot of slack in it. You want a little bit of slack, but not a lot. If you have too much slack, you're just gonna, it's just gonna kinda, it, it's not gonna do what you want. It's gonna wrap around your edge and it's going to ruin that edge. So let me move you a little bit this way again. So you kinda see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go over here, I'm gonna grab that razor. So you always start on the felt so drop that down a little bit so you stop you strop on your felt first and typically i'm not going to do as many passes as is recommended but usually 40 round trips one one two two three three i'm using no pressure and i'm keeping my strop fairly tight and it's the same so right there that would be all the stropping I would do to put this in a box, but I will just for Carlos, give it a pass on the leather. He's gonna have to strop this when he after he shaves the first time. Now there's a couple of tips and I'm gonna talk about that here in a second, but it's the same thing. Down, back, X pattern on your leather. Keep your leather nice and tight. You want it to have a little bit of give. You don't want to go too fast and you want to make sure that the entire razor makes contact with the leather. So there you go, guys. That is the entire stropping I would do on this razor before I send it to Carlos. So let's turn this around. I'm going to give you guys a couple little tips on stropping and then we'll do some final thoughts. Just a couple little things. If you get your stropping technique down, your edge should last for a very long time, especially if you're using more than one straight razor. Now there's a couple things you don't want to do when stropping. One, do not strop right after you shave. That steel has a little bit of a memory. It's like a spring and if it gets knocked out of shape, that's what the strop is for, is to bring that edge back into the shape it was after the sharpening. However, if you do it directly after shaving, because the beard hair is about as hard as, as copper wire at that size. And so what happens is that that edge kind of gets deformed and knocked around. When you strop it, you've straightened all those little those little areas back out. But if you do it right after you shave, they're really bent and they have a tendency to break off. So it's always best to let your razor rest overnight and strop right before you shave. Don't strop, strop after you shave, you can ruin your edge. The other thing is I don't recommend loading your strop. You're actually taking off material you don't need to, as you can see, my strop is not loaded. 
I, if you are going to load a strop, if you absolutely feel that you have to load a strop, I don't recommend anything more aggressive than Red Jewelers Rouge. And that's because it's really not gonna do anything except make you feel better about the fact that you put something on your strop. Razor strops do not need to be loaded. If you have a loaded strop, like my balsa wood ones, sometimes as they start to feel like they lose their edge, you can go back to that and bring it right back up and even get past the four to six months that I say on an edge. You can actually get further than that because you are kind of technically sharpening at a little bit because that is a, a that is an abrasive that's on that balsa. But technically, you know, I don't recommend anyone load their strop. So there you go, guys. Keep your strop tight. Keep your strop clean. Keep it somewhere where it's not going to get dirt and grunt all, grit all over it. Get a good one that has a felt side and a leather side. So let's go ahead and go back to Mike at the green screen and do some final thoughts. So guys, I knew it was gonna be a long video. For you guys, I think it's gonna wind up being, uh, I'm shooting this after the edit. Uh, I think it's gonna be about 40 minutes of just the sharpening-ish. Uh, it was 59 minutes and some change when I finished it the first time. So yeah, straight razors are time consuming. They always are, that's why I charge more for them, but they always come out great. Straight razors are always one of the best things to sharpen. They're fun, they're relaxing, so. Guys, that's it on this one. If you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but please try to tell me why. I can't change the content if you don't tell me what you don't like, especially if you're one of the paying members. Um, guys, if you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like I always say, like, share, subscribe, drop a comment. That's the best way. It pushes channels up the algorithm. Uh, but if you do want to support the channel financially, there's a handful of ways. Down below in the description, I have a membership tab that gets you in on a bunch of different benefits through three different tiers including exclusive content, premium tier sharpening tutorial series, and on top of all that, you save $5 per knife, well, per item, even if it's a straight razor. You save $5 per item at my sharpening service. Other ways you can do it, I have affiliate links down below. Anything you purchase, I get a portion of it at checkout. It doesn't cost you anything. The companies just pay me for bringing those items to you. And the last way is I do have the merchandise store that I mentioned earlier. On Ember Shirt Co., I have a coupon code set up that works anywhere on Ember Shirt Co. Saves you 10% at checkout. That coupon code is Crazy Sharp, all one word, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp, all one word. Saves you 10% at checkout. And like I say, if you send me a picture of you wearing my merchandise, I will put it in a video. Guys, that's it. I love y'all. Keep it clean in the comments section. It makes it easier to moderate the channel. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. And I will see you in the next video.